Julian, let me bring you over to our emerging market stocks. And you can see actually the difference between developed markets and emerging markets is that emerging markets uh, fell quite you know, significantly more because of Turkey. When does this end? Do you still worry about contagion? Well, there has been some contagion. We've seen this in the Indian rupee. Um, but I, as I said, overall, I think EM is a, is a compelling um, investment on a long-term basis. We know that the future of growth is going to be in Asia and emerging markets. It's, so the only question is really, what, what value do you, do you enter? And I, I think from now on is, is looking extremely um, attractive. I think I talked about a 35% discount, price earnings ratio discount to the rest of the world. Um, and based on that, you know, you're looking at strong returns going forward based on the history of when valuations have been this cheap. Okay, but do you fear that, I mean, we saw a significant move in the rand yesterday. We saw a significant move mm. in some of the other currencies that actually aren't related to Turkey, but this kind of, this fear and anxiousness taking hold mm. of the markets. Will it get worse before it gets better to today? I mean, you know, Lira is actually bid today. It's a bit better today, but I, th I think it's not just about Turkey. I think that the more the more generalized softness that you're seeing actually is, is to do with the dollar strength and the strength of the U.S. economy. So the U.S. economy is effectively exporting um, tightening around the world. And it's, it's always problematic for emerging markets whenever you have a strong U.S. economy. And of course, the U.S. economy un under this current administration has seen tax cuts and deregulation. We've had that 4.1% annualized GDP number. The Fed wants to, to hike rates. We're probably going to get the fourth rate hike this year. That's, that's always tough for emerging markets. But I think we can sort of see the, the end of that U.S. economic improvement. You know, there's, there's no more that can be done in terms of stimulus. Yes, possibly um, an infrastructure program. Yeah. We've got to get through the midterms first. We've got to see if the next election is won yeah. in 2020 before we can start talking about an infrastructure program. So I think from now on, mo most economists see that that 4% number in GDP annualized is actually going to start to soften next year. And the Fed, well, hopefully it's done after that fourth rate hike, or, or it doesn't need to be on such an aggressive program of predetermined hikes anyway, and, and maybe that'll give a little bit of a reprieve for emerging markets. So you're probably closer to the end than the beginning here, and, and that means as, as, a, as an investor you've got to start thinking about your moment to, to either add if you've already got the waiting or to start getting back in. Okay, w when do you get back in? Right, what needs to happen? Is it a 20% sell-off or is it something else? Yeah, well, I mean, I don't think we're in the middle of a crisis, right? It's not, an it's not a classic emerging markets crisis in the sense that all of the stock markets are down. There's contagion into Western markets. You know, the, the lira is not at 20 to the dollar. I mean, that's the sort of level where I think you have to get worried. And I, and I don't think we're there. I think, it, I think it's more of a kind of short-term, near-term volatility, which is resolvable, rather than an all-out EM crisis. Therefore, if you're waiting for things to get worse, you may well be disappointed. And there's no point getting too cute about your entry point. You know, this, as I said, the valuation is 35% cheaper than the developed world. That's good enough. And yeah, okay, if you buy now and it's a bit more volatile for the next year, so what? Extend your x-axis, wait it out, and, and, and you will prevail over time.